two win the game 20 to seven and now Newton North Tigers lead the series with 43 wins against 38 losses and six ties so now Brookline is looking for some obvious revenge now that they're back at their home field this is also important in far, as far as the suburban league standings are concerned because a win for Newton would tie them with Brookline at three wins and three losses in the suburban league let's take a quick look at the suburban league standings and you'll see Brockton, of course, is on top, undefeated. Waltham is second place. Brookline is third. They're three and two in the league. Newton North is two and three. As I mentioned, if Newton North wins this game, they'll be in a third place tie for with Brookline for the final stats. Now, Jerry, Brookline's looking to avenge last year's loss and come from a disappointing loss to Brockton, which we cable cast a couple of weeks ago. Right, Alan. Brookline playing some of its best football in years. Came in with high hopes of beating Brockton this year. But Brockton, of course, proved they are the best in Division I football. Uh, Walpole might have something to say about that, but we'll talk about that later. Beating Brookline 51 to 8. Even more disheartening was the fact that Brookline were never in the game. They're 21 to nothing before the first quarter ended. Brockton rolled up 325 yards total offense to Brookline's 177. The only bright spot was Corey Whitfield racing for 117 yards, including a 70-yard touchdown run. After the game, quarterback Langston Cawthon vowed that Brookline would beat Newton. As we mention every year, a win of Thanksgiving Day makes the whole season for the players. This year, a win for Brookline would give them an outstanding 7-3 record overall, which would be a great year for Brookline High School football. Also, Alan, when you consider the two of Brookline's losses came against Wesley and Brockton, two of the best teams in Division I, you can see how well the Indians played this year. And Coach McEwen told me today the coaches have given an award, the coaches award for most improved player, a JV player last year, outstanding running back this year, Corey Whitfield. Excellent. Oh, now from the Tigers side of the things, Tigers coming to today's game having lost two in a row to Brockton, of course, 48 to eight, and last week to Waltham, 32 nothing. Now, Coach Peter Capitolupo's team really is looking for this game as a chance to salvage their year, as you just mentioned, Jerry. Newton boasts a fine offensive backfield featuring quarterback Brandon Hare, fullback Dave Ratter, running back David Lewis, and wide receiver David Quinn. They'll need to play very well against this tough Brookline defense. We had a chance to talk to the coaches earlier. Let's hear those interviews. Newton North head coach Peter Capaglupo. Peter, you're five and four. Right. How do you feel your season's gone? Well, if you told us before the season that we had five wins with a chance to be have a winning season against Brookline, I would have felt pretty good. The last two weeks, though, we've taken some real hammerings, one from a great Brockton team, which also beat Brookline mm -hmm. fairly badly, but also from a good Waltham team that hammered us and shut us down. So we haven't had a lot to be happy about the last two weeks, and now we're facing a team which we feel is uh, one of the powers in the league, certainly on our schedule. You know, they've done a great job with them. They have unbelievable speed. The big problem we've had all year is stopping both a team with power and speed. Mm -hmm. As it looks right now, Coach, this is the last time that Brookline and Newton will be playing as rivals in the Suburban League. It looks next year they're both going to the Bay State League. Yeah, and I, what I'm hoping for with that naturally is that, that we maintain this relationship for Thanksgiving Day. I mean, it's a special time for both teams. Uh, too bad that the snow on Thursday that hurt. You know, it's quite a... You look forward to seeing old people. The, the game becomes almost incidental mm -hmm. to the spiritualness of people coming back here and, you know, people who follow this game for 30 years, 20 years, and that's too bad it's not being played on Thursday. But okay. as long as we keep playing them, I'll be very happy. Okay, Coach, good luck. Back here, just had the opening kickoff of this 88th annual Thanksgiving Day Classic as Brookline was able to receive, and Jeremy Ross brought the ball back to the 35-yard line with the Brookline offense, takes over first and 10 with the initial offensive play of the game. We'll hear the interview with Coach Bill McEwen from Brookline a little later on in the cable cast. Langston Cawthorn, eye formation with Cavallo and Whitfield behind him. Jeremy Ross split wide left. First play of the game here. Matt Lupikin over the ball. Hand off a go to Corey Whitfield. Hits the 35. Good defense. There's a linebacker on that left side, number 65. That was uh, Chim Champagne. Gain of about a half yard in that Allen tackled by Champagne. Made up Champagne. Number 65. There's a Brookline starters on your screen. Quarterback Lanson Cawthorn, the senior, also Cavallo and Whitfield, both seniors. Jeremy Ross, the raw receiver, and the split end is Matt Maroney. The interior line, Jesse Ritter, Halevi, Lopakine, Lou, Bowman, and Kelleher. Second down and about nine. Hand off to Cavallo, straight in the middle. Quick five yards from Malik Cavallo to the 40-yard line. So Brookline on the office, a third down and five. Ted Delacandro on the tackle. Here come the Tigers on defense. They have Farina at left end. Champagne's a, line, a tackle. Bo, Bauer, and Adams. Linebackers are Rada and Rada, David and Michael. Also, 
Del Sicandro, Lewis, Lager, and Quinn are the safeties. Third down and a little more than five in this opening series for Brookline. Pitch to Whitfield. He's hit the 35 and dragged down for a loss of about two yards. So Brookline will be forced to punt. He has good defense again on both sides of the field. Tim Champagne again made that stop, Allen. The play they tried to run wide left with it. He took the pitch in the backfield and didn't get every fire. Newton was ready from the officials for today's game, referee Vern. Why not? Umpire Jim Mon Monagle, field judge Chris Smith, and line judge Brian Dunn with the official time. Keeper Jim Wallace. Okay, back in deep punt formation for Brookline will be Langston Cawthorn going back to receive the Tigers of Newton North, number 80. Punting into the wind. It's Richie Lager. High nice kick. Kick comes down to Lager. Good catch, and he stopped right there after about a two yard return at the 35 yard line. So that's where the Tigers take over. First and 10. Number on that tackle was Joyas Narcissi and Corey Whitfield, along with Kenan Bigby. And we've heard a lot about Kenan Bigby this year. <laughs> Kenan's going to be a great ball player for Brookline before his career is through here, Allen. He's only a sophomore. OK, this Newton North offense quarterback is Her, Rada, and Lewis in the backfield. The wide receivers are Quinn and Freitas. Shotgun formation from the first play of the game for Newton's offense. Newton would like to get on the board quick, maybe, huh? Out to the sideline, pass is complete. There's going to be a first, first down. down out to the flank of back David Quinn. So Newton North, as you mentioned, wants to get down the field That's right, right away. Quinn just ran down the field, cut right back over the middle. Nobody on him. The pass was there for the first down. Blocking up front for the Tiger offense. You have Casey at the end, Glantz, Rada, Harris, Bauer, and Bagley. Good Thanksgiving crowd here still coming in. The line out on Kent Street. His uh, good size line out there, Allen, coming in. Straight up the middle. That's Rada. Over midfield into Brookline territory about the Brookline 49 yard line. Give him a gain of about six yards. Second down. No and, four. and co captain Asaf Alevi in on that tackle. 9 25 to go first period. We're actually just underway here. Brookline had the ball for three downs and a punt. And now this is the initial series for the Tigers. Shotgun formation again. Drop play, this time inside. Halfback is going to be stopped for a loss, or maybe a gain of a yard. David Lewis that time, his first carry of the game. Tackled by, I think, Len Davis at the bottom of that pile. Number, is that Len number 84? Yep, Len Davis at the bottom of that pile. Okay, the Indian linebacker, as you mentioned, Jerry, Captain Halevi, also David Lynch and Matt Lopez. I'm sorry, that was Mike Fenton returning for a starting role. Mike back in the lineup, number 81. Right in the middle and plugged that gap, made the tackle. Third down and five for the Tigers from Newton North. Here, back to pass, getting some pressure, rolls to the right, over the middle, passes behind the receiver, incomplete. Good pressure by linebacker Eric Horsley. Eric was right in on him, chasing him from behind, forced the bad throw, and the ball was thrown behind the runner. Okay, Jason Fletcher was the intended receiver, number 32. As you mentioned, Jerry, the pass was behind him and fell incomplete. So fourth down now for Newton. Going back to punt for them will be David Quinn. Good snap. And Pin get, Quinn gets it away. Jeremy Ross, the 11-yard line. Gonna so try running to get room. Gets a good block from Cawthorn, 20. Jeremy, Mar Jeremy Ross to the 23-yard line. Langston Cawthorn threw a good block to give Ross some room to get that extra seven yards. Mike Ratta made the stop, but there was a little wall building up there. There was a good a return on. They had plenty of room, but Ratta stuck through the pile to make the stop. So no score here. First period action. As the crowd, like you mentioned, Joe, I've never seen a line like that on Kent Street. Maybe... A lot of the fans thought it was a typical 130 stars. Most and of they're still coming. They're going all the way. This is good. Good. Nice to see the big crowd here for Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> Two days Two later. Days later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first and 10 for Brookline. Balls to their own 23-yard line. Split backfield this time with Whitfield and, and Cavallo. You have Jeremy Ross, the wide receiver to the right. Cawthorn, handoff. Cavallo, 25. Spins to the 27-yard line. Malik Cavallo, good strong running there. Give him a quick four yards, call it a second down and six. Tackle by number 50, Mike Ratta. Good defensive uh, series for Brookline. 
Uh, the first play that Newton came out with, they picked up a first down, but then Brooklyn stopped them uh, on the subsequent plays, and Newton had to kick the ball away. I think that first pass was a, was a surprise to Brooklyn's yeah. defense because they were set in their run defense, and the shotgun formation got their first well, down. Coach Capitol told me they were really worried about Brooklyn. Corey Whitfield trying this left sideline. He's hit and drops about the 30-yard line. He'll be three yards short of a first down. Again, Mike Rada. It's called third down and three. Okay, Mike Rada plays linebacker. Then he has a couple of you. David is in the back, starting backfield on offense. Third down, about four yards to go. And Allen, as I said with Coach Capagrupo, according to uh, athletic director Ed Schlentz of Brooklyn High School, 99% chance that this is the last time these teams will meet in the Suburban League. They will both play in the Bay State League, and this great rivalry will continue. And we're glad to hear That's that. That's good to hear, exactly. Third down and four, actually, because Woodfield was dropped a, a yard short. Here's the first chance of the Veer. Pitch to Woodfield, 25. Gets the sidelines to the 30, and you see where they're marking. He should have a first down. That's first down and easy. He reached out with the ball and got that past the first down marker. That Good run by Corey stretch. Woodfield. Last stretch by Corey Woodfield did get the first down, so Brook Brown keep this drive going at their own 34-yard line. We're down to 6.45 to go first quarter. No score here. Alan Platt and Jerry Walsh with our final cable cast of this 1989 Brookline High School football season. And overall, Jerry, it's been a very interesting and fun year. season. It's been a great year. I, we've had a lot of fun here, Alan, as we always do. during the, And the biggest part about this, as far as I'm concerned, when the kids come up and say, thanks for doing the games, that's all I care about. Kids get something out of it and they enjoy it. Okay, timeout on Brookline's offense as they have a little confusion on what play they want to have called. This good shot of Lance Cawthorn, the senior quarterback and co-captain. Talking about the league realignments, as it stands right now, the two Quincy's, North Quincy and Quincy, will go in the Old Colony League, which makes sense. It's a South Shore Conference, and that's where they are on the South Shore. Newton and Brookline will go into the Bay State League, which will make that an excellent league, good competition for them. Cambridge and Waltham will go into the Greater Boston League, and Brockton will be independent. And scraping around for games. Well, Pretty much. well you make your own bed. Right. Now you have to sleep in it. Okay, still no score. First quarter of action as the crowd is yeah, continuing. I mean, we're gonna have, we, we had actually had a big crowd for the know, two games two games ago. Yeah, okay. And this one is easily going to surpass that. 88th game between these two teams. It's amazing. As we mentioned, of course, the last game for all the senior players, and Brooklyn has 13 seniors on their roster this year, including co-captains Cawthorn and Halep. And later on, when you hear the interview with uh, head coach Bill McEwen, he gives some special attention to the fact that his captains have led this team very well. This oh, year. they should have been two great captains. They've led by example. And that's the best way a captain can lead. Do the job on and off the field, and they've done it both ways. First and 10 for Brookline, 34-yard line. Back to pass goes Cawthorn. First pass of the game. Get some pressure. Escapes Lewis. Pass over the middle. It's going to be a great catch by is that uh, 24, Galea. Great catch. Andrew saw that Langston was in trouble, Alan. Langston came right, had a run back to the left. He stopped. He saw Gamir. Gamir was coming back to help out the quarterback. Very important. When the trouble, you come back to help good, him out. Good diving catch, which is difficult to make when you're already on the turf. So, five-yard gain for that one. Second down and five on a play that very easily could have been a 10-yard loss. That's right. Langston's got great uh, ability, though. He gets away from those players pretty well. 5.45. Corey Whitfield slammed down the backfield. That's going to be a loss of about four yards. Good defensive play. Number 54 on the blitz. That was uh, Brett Quarrel. He just and flew in and grabbed the back. And Ratter again flew in, grabbed the ball carrier, and threw over the ground. And the early going here, Jerry, Ratter has been incredible on defense. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of like the, the Mike Ratter show from Newton. He's played... <laughs> Fantastic football. Okay, third down, and now it's nine. That was a four-yard loss. Cawthorn now in the backfield. Corey Whitfield comes out of the lineup. Whitfield comes out, and Kenan Bigby's in for the first time. Bigby in motion. Back to pass, Cawthorn. Get some pressure down the sideline. Oh, Bigby, pass is going to be short. It's a 35, 30, good return for Newton North. The 30, Jason Fletcher, he was the only player near that ball. The ball was... Just drastically underthrown. underthrown. It was intended for Bigby, who was behind the defender, but the ball was underthrown, and uh, Fletcher just picked it off and brought it back. 
to the 26 yard line and Newton North. Let's watch that again. You'll see Jerry misses the fact that the pass is underthrown. Good pressure. Let's watch Coughlin throw it off the bat, off the wrong foot. It comes up short. Good catch by Fletcher. It comes back. And there's a clip right there on number 27 that wasn't called. Good return. First and 10 for Newton North in Brookline Territory, 26 yard line. In motion goes David Quinn. Hand off. Right up the middle. Good running room to the 15 and 10 inside the 10 yard line to the 7th. David Rada. That's the other part of the Rada combination. He just blew right up the middle into the Brookline secondary down to the 8 yard line. And Jerry, I, I have to tell you who made the key block. Mike Rada. <laughs> <laughs> Number 50 playing both ways so far in the white jerseys. Having an amazing game. Rada plays left guard and linebacker on defense. He just blew up the middle. That hole was wide open. Lewis and Rada behind Burrow, the quarterback. Hand off this time. Again, that's going to be David Rada. This time he's going to be stopped for maybe a game of yard. Horsley Lynch. Lynch. He test here, Jerry. Horsley Lynch Fenton in on that tackle. Ball is knocked down at the seven yard line. Actually, he's knocked down for a gain of, of nothing. Still goal to go. Second and goal this time as Lewis comes out of the lineup. Going in for. Newton North, we have Tel Delacandro, number 27. He's deep back in the eye. Now he splits. Hell, handoff again to Rada. He's banging Rada all over. Spins his way to the five. That's where they'll knock it down. Third down and goal now. Brookline's defense, the interior defense in the middle, they're doing a good job for Levy. Job. A player who's gone, uh, we haven't mentioned him all as much this year, but he's played excellent football. Very, very steady football as Zeke Bowman, number 60. He's been right in the middle there the entire year for Brookline's defense. Those last two plays, he came out real strong. Okay, third down and goal from the five-yard line now. 3.20 left in the first period. No score. Parsons Field. And the crowd is still pouring in. Good for a pass. Get some pressure from Lynch. Harrer has some room. Gets to the sideline. Touchdown, Newton North. Got out of the containment that time, faked the pass, and was able to use good footwork against the corner of the end zone. Newton North leads 6 0. Well, two linebackers were chasing him. Uh, the captain, the Halevi and, Halevi and him, Lynch. But good speed by the Newton North quarterback. Good speed, ran for the corner, and made the score. All that set up. All that was set up by an interception. Okay, there you see Brandon Hare, the. Newton North quarterback will score that touchdown, so now they set up for the extra point. The attempt will come from about the 10-yard line. Coach Capitolupo is uh, berating the referee. We have a call here. Third down. I don't understand the call, Alan. He's we'll have to get that clarified. I don't quite know what that signal was. Well, they're going to take the touchdown off the board, Jerry. Yes. We will have an explanation There's for There's no explanation here, but the touchdown is not... We saw the referee give a, a, a signal like a punching. If that was hockey, I'd say he got roughing, but uh, I don't know what the call was. Well, we'll find no, out. There's no penalty yard marked off either. No. Okay, third and goal for Newton North. Watch us straighten that one out later on. I know I know. Coach Capadulupo was up that. It's the first time we've seen him without his head on in the last three years. Shotgun formation here. Back to pass. Looking into the end zone. He has Rada. Intercepted by Brookline. Five yards. Play by Brookline. All right. Now Brookline will right. take over. Interception by Matt Lupaking. Matt Lupaking is up with the interception. Him. And they're, they're deep in their own territory, but they have the ball. Well, that's the key thing. Ball's at the actually five yard line. Let's watch that last play. You'll see Brandon here, the quarterback for Newton North. It's shotgun. There was a short pass, linebacker playing. Between the quarterback and the receiver, picked Playing it off. Good perfect catch. position. 
Rockwell hands off Corey Whitfield to the 10-yard line. It drops to the 11. Dan Kelly, our statistician, went down and talked to one of the former assistant coaches for Brookline, uh, Bobby Lynch, and the whistle was blown before the ball carrier entered the end zone. <laughs> why? The question becomes why, right. <laughs> Who knows? The mystery continues. We'll try okay, to find out. An that whistle stops that on. play. Fails Whitfield, who carries for a gain of five yards. Up the middle again. This time, nothing, or maybe, maybe a yard for Brookline's defense again. Stopped by Jason Fletcher. Whitfield. Okay, Fletcher came up, also linebacker Ryder. Strange play. The whistle blew before the runner went in the end zone. We will get a clarification of that for you and how that turns things right around. Newton looks like at least six nothing, maybe seven to nothing score. <laughs> Had to see in the field for the extra point. Right? the field for the extra point, and then they turn around and get intercepted when the players call back. Third and four. Balls at the Brookline 11 yard line. Whitfield again slammed down for a loss of about five and. Uh, being deep in your territory, you, you want to be safe and conservative and run the ball. This time, the Newton North Tiger defense waiting for that running play. And Brooklyn will be forced to punt out of their own end zone. Well, this is tough. They're punting into the wind, deep in their own territory here. Jeff Cawthon go back in punt formation. Back to receive. You have a bad snap as two points for uh, Newton. Uh, many things can happen when you're this uh, deep in your own territory, Alan. Richie Liga back to receive for Newton. Front by Cockrell, because it's about the 40, 35 yard line. The 30, Leaguer hit and dropped right at the 30 yard line. Good tackle by Mike Cutton. That's 81 and 32. Ken and Bigby right there held him out. But the runner got the ball, took about four steps, and Mike Fenton nailed him. Good job by Leaguer, too, for Newton North. And there's, there's Jerry's fans. <laughs> They're all, all up Kent Street, right? Yep. First and ten for Newton North. No score. And off again. Radda, 25-yard line hit and drops. Gain of about four yards. Looks like it'd be a lot more. Nice tackle by Chris Tierra-Patkin. Chris was the last man. He took him down low and brought Radda down. Again, big hole in the defense of Brookline to give Radda some running room. As we are down to 35 seconds to go before the end of the first quarter. High formation again, Rada and Delacandro behind Brandon here, the quarterback. That play looked like it could have gone for a lot more than it did. Huh? That's a pass. Now his hand out to Rada, trying the right sideline, hit it, not out of bounds, gain of maybe three yards. Held up by Malik Cavallo and Chris Kirapatkin come in to lower the boom and push him out of bounds. Okay, that was a second down and six, give him two yards on that one, make it a third down and four. Big defensive play for Brookline coming up here. I'd like to add one word, Alan. The gentleman for the last two or three years who've produced all of our Brookline high school sports has moved on to Cablevision, and we'd like to give Jim DeDonna a little bit of thanks for doing a great job. Good job. From I'm Cable sorry, he's going to Sports, channel, sports right? Channel. From Cablevision, and he's done a great job for Brookline high school sports. Here, handoff on delay. David Lewis, 25. David Dyer's down to about 21. He'll be a little short of the first down, about a yard short. That'll be a fourth down and about a yard. I saw Falevi in on that tackle, along with Zeke Bowen and Jesse Ritter. All right, now what do you do now, Alan? Uh, you got to well, go up right? the break here to think about because that's the end of the first quarter. So, after the first period of play here at Parsons Field in Brookline, no score, surprisingly, because we sure thought that New thought that a touchdown. But here's the score. <laughs> it's nothing, nothing so far. Alan Platt and Jerry Walsh will return with second quarter action after this. At the Brookline, 21, handoff, right hit. He's going to be close. Five, be very close to see where the officials mark it. He had to get to the 20-yard line. Looks like he's short. The official interpretation of that nullification of the touchdown. Whistle blew before the ball was snapped. And Brookline holds. 
Okay, Brookline takes over as Rado was stopped short. He had to get to the 20-yard line. He was clearly stopped at the 21. So, Brookline offense back on the field. They're on the 21-yard line. Still no score. What I don't understand is if the whistle blew, why wasn't there a penalty? I mean, if this gave the, uh, this replayed the down, essentially. Well, there was no play. The whistle blew before the ball was snapped, so it's no play at all. They just take it all right from the get-go. Get okay, first and 10 for Brookline. Cavallo and Whitfield, the running backs behind quarterback Lance and Cawthorn. Cawthorn hits to Whitfield. He's dropped after a short gain of two yards, out to the 23. Tackled by Brett Farley. First half stats. Brookline 15 yards rushing as opposed to Newton's 34 yards, and most of that came from the big run by Rada. Five yards passing to Brookline for 10 to Newton, and that was the one pass uh, to start the game off. Total 20 to 44 yards. First downs, Brookline one and Newton North two. Second down and eight for Brookline. Here comes a fake reverse pass to pass, goes Cawthorn, has a little running room. Looks to the sideline, Lancet cuts back, 25, 30, Cawthorn. Flag on the play. Flag on the play, an illegal block. I don't know who the illegal block was. Andrew Gamir helped out to take somebody out, and then the referee threw the flag. It's gonna be Eric Horsley. Yes. After. Lancet made a nice run, Lancet a little bit upset at that call. After the play broke down and Cawthorn decided to run, there was some action behind him, and one of the Newton North defenders sort of turned Clip. around, clipping penalty. Calling a clip against Brookline. That'll set him back inside the 20-yard line. That was a good run by Langston Cawthorn. Well, we've seen it all year, Jerry, whenever he's had some running room, usually the passing plays that break down, if the receivers are covered, he'll uh, run to one side or the other and be able to make something out of it. Okay, second and 20 now as Brookline will be forced back to their own 12-yard line. Alan, as we've said many times, I guess in these traditional games, the records can be thrown out. Oh, right? definitely, most definitely. Uh, in, now this year, the, it happens the records are very close. Shotgun formation, Cawthorn looking deep downfield. He has Gamir out there, long and overthrown. Incomplete. And there's a flag of the play. Might be roughing the passer, I'm not quite sure. Might be holding, I don't know what it was. But I'll tell you, Andrew Gamir seemed uh, a little mix up in the pattern whether uh, holding, against, holding Brookline. against Brookline. Langston yeah. threw the ball well over Andrew's head. Uh, it appeared that Andrew did, did uh, uh, stop running on the pad. Well, I don't know if he got held up a little bit. I think he stopped running, kind of get held, held up by the defensive back, and the ball was thrown way over his head. Okay, the holding penalty is declined because Newton North already has Brookline backed up with a third down and 20. Okay, so Brookline now comes in with Jeremy Ross as a wide receiver. They have tight end Mike Kelleher. And Brooklyn will take a timeout. This is this could be an important play here because even if you're up to 20 yards for the first down, you want to give yourself some room to, to get a good punt off. That's right. You can't be punting from your own end zone. He's already kicked once from his end zone. Ten fifty-two, fifty-three to go before halftime here on the flat and Jerry Walls took a good shot of the Newton North sideline. Zero zero. Ten fifty-three left in the first half. One touchdown nullified by Newton North by a whistle and it written whistle before the play. So one of the referees evidently saw something before the play, but as you say, why would they blow the well, whistle if there was no penalty? Just a mistake on the official's part because uh, the whistle wasn't blown for penalty, obviously, because there was no mock off, but so you can understand why Peter oh, Kepper was, was upset. <laughs> Talk about heat is that? I don't blame the man. Okay, Brookline's gonna fish a third down and 20. They're gonna be at their own 12-yard line. Shotgun formation again. Ross wide right. And a quick kick by Cawthorn. It's gonna come down. Sales about the 40 and oh, it gets a bad bounce for Brookline. So it's gonna Matt be Maroney the saved the ball from going back five yards further. Okay, 39-yard line, that's where Newton North will take over first to in Brookline territory. We've seen that quick kick a couple times by uh, Cawthorn yeah. earlier in the season also. It's a good time for it now, third and 20. But Newton again gets the ball in, in decent field position. The wind is blowing into Newton's face now. But they have the ball on the 39-yard line of Brookline. They've uh, had the ball in Brookline's territory 
Every play except the opening sequence, Alan. Okay, Brandon here. Has Rada and Lewis behind him. Going in motion, that's Quinn. Handoff is to Rada right at the middle. Good four yard gain on that one. Down to the 35 yard line. Tackle in there by Brookline. Jesse Ritter and Mike Fenton. Okay, Ritter is one of the seniors on this, this year's team. And, and Eric Corsley also went on the tackle. Brookline's defense has been equal to the task so far today. There, back to pass. He's going to run the sideline. Nice movement by the quarterback, and he's going to be very close to the first down. That last dive may have got the first down. Langston Cuthon makes the tackle in the secondary. Got some help that time also from David Lynch. I'm sorry, Matt Lupicki. Okay. He was short as his knee was down at the 30-yard line. That'll be a third down and one. Good run by Harry. Cut it up into the middle. Here again has Lewis and Rada behind him. This time on the wing will be Colin Casey. Handoff. Rada hit at the 30, and he's going to be thrown back. No again, first down. Again, Brookline's defense can throw, but I'm sure they'll try it again, Alan. Okay, he had Fenton in there along with Cawthorn. A couple of linebackers. That was David Lynch with the initial hit. Halevi, they're all in on that tackle. Yeah, Rad has been the main runner so far. Number 42 out of the fullback slot for Newton North. So that time, Brookline's defense just gets correctly. <laughs> Number 80, Reggie Ledger, is bringing the plays in. Yeah, time Newton off for Newton North, time North this time because, as you recall, the last time they tried a fourth and one that didn't make it, had to turn the ball over deep in Brookline territory. So I think that uh, Peter Capitolupo, the coach for the Newton North Tigers, want to make sure they have the right play called to have a much better chance of getting that first down. No score here. 8.54 to go before halftime. This is the annual Thanksgiving Day Classic. A couple plus of days two. later because <laughs> plus two, right? Plus two. Okay. <laughs> Turkey Day plus two. As the Brookline sideline is actually Newton North sideline is pretty full too. Yep. Yep. It's your score. No score yet. It's the coaching staff of Brookline High School Indians giving final defensive instructions. If there are any advantages to AstroTurf, this is one of them where they just put the plow on, scrape the snow off. And the field is an excellent And condition. actually, earlier today, when the sun was out, it melted some of the, the glaze and the ice that was on the field. Okay, I formation. Fourth and a long yard for Newton North. Brandon hit a quarterback. Fakes the handoff. He's going to run past the sideline. Great catch. Number 41, Colin Casey. Colin Casey makes a fantastic one-handed grab. Colin Casey, 6'2", 190-pound senior, makes a fantastic catch for the first down. Okay, balls at 26 Who wants the replay? Who watched this lad just get up there, get the ball, and stick his arm up in the air? Pass was way over his head. He makes a fantastic get catch over here. Is he on the rollout? Pass and good one-handed grab by Casey. First and 10 for Newton North. Balls to the brook line, 26-yard line. Draw play, David Lewis, hit and stop, no game. May have lost the yard, actually. That's how the levy sniffed that out. David Lynch, the linebacker on the right side, was right up running to the line to blitz. The play went the other way, and Asaf Alevi, the co-captain, was there to nail him. Good play. So it wasn't lost for the yard, second down and 11 now. Yeah, the defense has dominated this entire game so far. That's right. 8.03, 8.02 left in the first half with no score. Second down and 11. Shotgun formation. The quarterback Brandon here. Good day at the ticket booth. <laughs> over, fakes the pass over the middle. Now rolls out to his left. He's going to run the ball. Nice spin by here inside the 20. 15. Down to about the 13 yard line. Brandon here. Excellent faking and running by a junior quarterback for Newton North. Excellent coverage by the Brooklyn. And there's a flag on the play. Thrown late. A little extracurricular activity. 
Excellent run by Hare. His receivers were covered by the Brookline defenders. He saw that he put the ball down, tucked it in, and ran for the first down. Well, we'll see what the flag is now. It's going to be a dead ball foul against Brookline. That's Brookline. That's going to that's going to really hurt. Yeah. The that ball's point. already at the 13. That's going to put the Tigers deeper into Brookline territory. Personal foul against Brookline. Ball now goes down to the seven yard line. Six yard line, I'm sorry. First and goal now at the six for the Newton North Tiger offense. Again, the defense from Brookline is being called upon to thwart this Newton attack. Okay, first and goal. Back to the I formation for the Tigers. Right up, your back, and David Lewis, sophomore running back at the tail. Pitch to right. Lewis, trying to get some room outside. Cuts back inside the five. Lewis dives down to about the three. Malik Cavallo wouldn't go for his fake. Stayed, held his position and grabbed him around the waist to hold him down as he cut back toward the middle. Okay, Lewis gets, gets to the four. Excellent play by Brookline's defense to string that one out. And as you mentioned, Cavallo stayed with Lewis the entire time to make the stop. 6.50 to go before halftime. Still no score here at Parsons Field in Brooklyn. The 88th annual Thanksgiving Day Classic. Newton North Tigers with their white shirts, black football pants. Brooklyn High School Indians in their traditional home uniforms, blue with these silver pants. Time out by Newton North's offense. They'll face a second down and goal. Balls at the four-yard line. Now they were deep, this deep in the first quarter and had that unfortunate inadvertent whistle prevent a touchdown that was scored by quarterback Brandon here. This is score, no score yet, as we see the Brookline. You can only go to the well, you know, so now often. first in the case of the annual Brookline yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Indian haircut. Yes. You have to, uh, you know, you can't keep going and expecting your defense to hold up under these circumstances, Alan. Well, you mentioned earlier, uh, Jerry, and it's very true. So far, the field position of both teams uh, has been an advantage for Newton North and a disadvantage for Brookline. Right. And when you are Newton North and you have this advantage, you have to punch it in. You definitely do, because one big player at Brookline's offense can change the whole field position right. situation. Right. So, Okay, S second down and goal. Balls just inside the five-yard line. Brandon here rolls to his left, keeps it. Looking to run, the hit in. Dropped, good play by Halevi again. Coming from that linebacker spot in the middle. Made an excellent tackle. That's going to knock here back to the seven-yard line. Halevi followed uh, here right down the line. Followed him all the way down the line. When he turned to cut up field, Halevi was there to nail him. One thing that Brandon here did on the touchdown run he held, the, the apparent touchdown run, he faked the pass first. These last couple of times he's had that option play, he's not even faked the pass and just made it look like a run all the way. Third and goal from the seven now. Clock running down to six minutes. Brookline defense, key play here. Third and goal from the seven-yard line. Shotgun again for the offense of the Tigers. Della Candro's in the backfield now with Rada. Looking over the middle of the pass. This is here. Now throws it, and it's going to be incomplete as the intended receiver that time was Colin Casey again. The closest player to it was Langston Cosline. So fourth down and goal now. Now when and does Coach Capitolupo say, well, do we go for three points or do we keep trying to punch in the touchdown? Well, the, the little bit of win there is is against Newton North at this point. So the field goal attempt, if there is one, would come from about the 16-yard line, make it a 26-yard attempt. I'm not sure what kind of strength their kicking game has. But I think that at this point, the offense for Newton North has to be frustrated. They've had, like you said, good uh, chances to get in the end zone. They, they had that one touchdown call back, and they are going to try for a field goal. It'll be a 25-yard attempt. Maybe. Right, maybe. <laughs> One never knows. But I mean, shot of all the these times, Brookline head coach Bill McEwen, and now we see Peter Capilupo, and he usually off. has a hat on. Yeah, uh, after that, they lost yeah. that first touchdown. He threw the hat away. He haven't seen it since. But you have to get some points. You've been down the territory three times, and they come away too. They have to come up with some points. Good snap. Kick it. No good. Actually, Shanks off to the side is no good. So Number 48, I think Malik Cavallo got a piece of it, Alan. Brookline's defense says Cavallo, like you said, did come in from the right side to put some pressure on the kicker. And Brookline's defense holds the Tigers of Newton North with nothing again. Still no score. 5.43 to go before halftime. And Brookline's offense comes back on the field. And the ball comes out to the 20-yard line. But Brookline ends up uh, not too bad after that. 
Yeah, they gained 13 yards and then missed field goal. But they can't keep doing that. They have to uh, get going here. Okay, first attempt for Brook Lyons offense now. Even some of the school committee members come out in these days to watch the football game. Okay, in the backfield now for Brook Lyons, we have Kenan Bigby, Bigby, the single back. Corey Whitfield is split left as a wide receiver. Wide right is Jeremy Ross. Bigby now sits behind Cawthorn. Handoff to Bigby. He is hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll be dropped. See where Malcolm, he may have got a, a gain of a yard. Both teams are here to play today, though, Alan. You can see that. Well, the emotion, I think, is really uh, showing itself on the defensive side of the ball so far. Yeah, we used to say Thanksgiving, if victory would make your turkey taste better. What do we say now? Make your black and beans taste better? <laughs> <laughs> a little brown bread. Down to 5.15 to go. Second down now. It'll be second down to nine as give Big B one yard in that last carry. So Big B stays in. Now he has Whitfield. Has the deep eye and the deep back on the eye. And out. This is going to be Whitfield. Stumbles out to the 23. He's going to be hit and not that bounce about the 25 yard line. Number 54, Brett Barley again. And number 27 for Newton, Ted Delacandro. Wouldn't buy for the fake. They kept stringing the play out. Brooklyn tried to make it so Whitfield could cut up, but the Newton defenders strung it out. And Good defense, but Whitfield did actually get five yards, so third down and four. Brooklyn's waiting for one of those plays to bust down. That's the play that's been very, very successful for them. Well, we've seen all year. go at it, go at it all, all year during the course of the game, and a couple times it, it will break for some yardage. Okay, third and four now. Ratchet passes, Carthorne looks over the middle. Now he's going to run it. Now he throws downfield for Jeremy Ross. Jeremy jumped a little too soon. The ball may have been overthrown anyway. Couldn't have got it anyway. He couldn't have got it. The ball was overthrown. Jeremy tried to get up in the air for it, but the ball was uh, well overthrown, and in comes the punting team for Brookline. He was faking that time by Kaufman as he had a running fake into the line. Then he faked as if he was going to run it. When he saw the pressure coming up to him, he pulled back and threw the pass downfield, but slightly overthrown to Jeremy Ross. Okay, going back to receive with Lager. He'll be joined by David Quinn. Kicking for Brooklyn will be Langston Cawthorn. When did it back? Nice kick by Langston. It's oh, just out of nice 40, yeah, it's nice going to go, pass. whoa. Oh, well, he's way down. They got to get it before it gets in the end zone. And they got the it on the one-yard one line. A sensational kick. Langston had the win, but he also got the turnover. The ball kicked over and rolled and rolled and rolled. It's not a rolling. The 40-yard line ends up as a 74-yard punt. 74-yard <laughs> punt for Langston Carthon. And now the field position turns around. Well, this could be I, I just mentioned a big play. I, I was thinking in terms of a big run or a pass on offense, but actually the punt can do the same job. 435 left. Which feels a fair thing because the ball was bouncing so quick it could have easily gone into the end zone. That's right. As I said, he's got to get it before it gets in the end zone. An excellent punt. Langston got the ball up into the wind, but along with the wind, it turned over for him. It just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. First and ten from the one yard inside the one yard line for Newton North offense. This is the best field position Brookline's got all day, and they haven't even got the ball. Here's David Lynch threatening a blitz here, and he comes in the blitz as Brandon Hare is very close. Okay, they're going to say he was able to make it out to the one yard line, back to the line of scrimmage. David Lynch had uh, eyes on getting two points there on a safety. Okay, Lynch was able to clog up the entire middle as we use our end zone camera. There you see a good shot of the Brookline defensive front. Fenton, Hume, and there was Jesse Ritter. Langston asking with the defensive also, coach, Alex Farrell, what's going on. I have to also credit Brookline's coaching staff. We'll get to their names after this. Okay, another blitz for Brookline. Second down and ten. And this is David Lynch. <laughs> he did it that time. He got the he safety. Got him that time with the no, sir, I thought they were going to call for an offside because he act, he really guessed on the snap count. And he did it. And the, and the Newton North players, the Newton North players are. Okay, I think we are going to have a. Well, we do have a flag. A flag, right? Because I think he was a little too quick on that one. 
Because it appeared from, from watching it. Well, you, you, you said ball. it looked like right. it was going to be outside. Brookline coaches, head coach, of course, Bill McEwen, assistant Alex Spera, Tom Rizzuti, Peter Mead, James Rock, and Ron Flynn, and they've done a great job with the Brookline staff and their manager, Alexa Grossman, director of athletics, Ed Schlentz, team physicians, Brad Chayette, Kathy Bryan, and Norm Devio, the trainer of Brookline High School. Norm has been in the Brookline schools for years, does a great job keeping these athletes in shape. Okay, after a five-yard walk-off, it'll be second down and five. Now the ball's at the Newton North six-yard line. We're down to 3.45 to go before halftime. Still no score. Lewis and Retta behind quarterback Brandon Hare. And uh, fake handoff. Now he's tried. Uh, Lewis. That was Brandon Hare. Kept the ball. Stop by Zeke Bowman. Okay, Hare was able to... And number 59, Matt Lopakin. David Lynch that time was blitzing again. The fake went to Rada. David rolled off of Rada, but the hole filled up, and Lopakin and Bowman were able to make the stop. Stop for no gain, so now a third down and five. 315 left. Brookline should get the ball in a good field position here. Okay, now. Pending a, a, a stop here by their defense. Newton North has to get to their own 11 yard line for the first down. Brandon here. It's a quick kick here as we have Delacandro. The ball's going to bounce. That gets a good bounce the other way. Into Brookline territory back at about the 40-yard line, 45-yard line with a little roll dead. So we've seen two quick kicks as teams have taken advantage of that strategy. Langton used his head there. Langton used his head there. He could have fielded that ball and taken a chance on getting hit. To the the though. So he just let it roll. So for Brookline, they'll have a first and 10th. They're on 45 yellow. They have 2.48 to go before halftime to try to get something on the scoreboard here. Carthorn getting his last second instructions from the coach. There's Bill McEwen right there with his blue and white good luck hat. That's his 1985 <laughs> Brookline Newton North hat. Billy's done a great job with this team. Shotgun formation, wide right, Jeremy Ross. Carthorn, it's gonna be a drop play. Corey Whitfield, 45, Whitfield to midfield. He'll stop, he'll stop right there, gain of five yards. That play just kind of floated out. It didn't seem like any bang, no crispness to it. Just kind of floated there for a shot gain. Okay, let's give Whitfield five yards. Second down and five. Nice down to see some of the... To go before half time. Nice to see some of the players from the past we see. That's all part of the... The are here. Uh, Second and five. Langston Cawthon, Walter Norton, who's at Boston University, we've seen. Pass it to Woodfield. Deflection caught by Woodfield. Out of bounds, inside. The 40 to the 30-yard line of Newton North. Good concentration by Corey Whitfield because the defender on the play had actually come up and deflected the ball. The defender, I believe it was number four, David Lewis, let the ball go float right through his hands. You'll see the ball float right through the defender's hands and right into a Brookline receiver's hands for the nice gain. Here's Langston dropping back. Here's the pass. Right through, right into Corey Whitfield. Okay, the defensive timeout here now is Newton North team. Uses the timeout to set their defense across the 39-yard line. That was a good gain for a first down. That pass play won 11 yards. Jeff Camille sitting over here to our right. Along with Langston caught on some of the players in the pass. And the stick crew across the field, two of my classmates from 1959, Paul Buckley and Bud Heavey. Okay, Carthorne talking to Coach McEwen, two coaches there. Newton's playing very... Uh, a lot of emotion today, Allen. They're really up high for both this game. Teams out, I think, like I said before, earlier, we've really seen it on defense, especially. Two minutes and seven seconds left in the first half. We have no score. Brookline has the ball in their best offensive field position of the day. First and ten from their Newton 39-yard line. Again, back in the shotgun goes quarterback Langston Cawthorn. Which field goes in motion to the right. High snap, Cawthorn brings it down. Looks deep downfield. Yes, Cawthorn. 
Uh, Whitfield was best, I think, caught in the wind, actually, as it sailed. Yeah. It really sailed, took off on him. Receiver was down there. The ball took off on Langston into the wind. Okay, if this second down play, we're going to see Ken Bigby come back into the Brookline backfield. Also, Andrew Camille will be coming in as a wide receiver. Jeremy Ross and Malik Cavallo come out of the ball game. He mentioned the most, and actually for all the Thanksgiving Day games, especially for high school kids, they're usually the last game of the season. So uh, for many seniors, especially, it's their last time on the field uh, right. for their schools. Right. Second down and 10. Back to pass again. It's going to be a drop play to Cannon Big B. Hit behind the line of scrimmage and drop for a loss of two. Good play. That's going to be Barley, number 54, sniffed that right out. Nailed him right after he got it up to the line. So, Brookline now has a third down and 13. Balls at the 42-yard line of Newton North. An overflow crowd of the Brookline stand. This is incredible. Standing room. <laughs> SRO at Parsons Field. Third and 13. Woodfield out in the wing. Now he goes in motion. And we have Carthorne back to pass. Over the middle, it's going to be caught. Mike Kelleher. It's very close to first down. He got it. I think Mike, Mike used his activity, his activity, his great size and his agility to bang his way forward after he caught the ball he has for the, the first, first down. down. Ball is spotted on the North. Okay, no huddle here for Brooklyn. Hurry up offense. We are down to 1.14 to go before half. Mike Kelleher did a nice job getting open. Langston waited, waited, waited. When he got free, he hit him, and he carried a hit for the first down. Okay, clock starts running. Down to 110. Ball's at the 28-yard line of Newton North. Brookline's offense with their best drive so far. Rolling out to the left this time. Here comes Carthorne. Gets some pressure. Now with some running room down the middle. Carthorne to the 25. Hit and drop to the 23-yard line. Good run by Langston. Carthorne took it right up the middle. Clock is winding down. 50 seconds. No huddle again. Carthorne brings his team to the line of scrimmage. Second down and six. Second down and four in a six-yard game by Carthorne. Langston back to pass. Has Ross going over the middle. Jeremy Ross incomplete. Good defense. Up. And the flag is thrown for interference. Jeremy Ross, the ball was thrown. And then three defenders and Jeremy Ross still almost came down with it. But he got hit before the ball got to him. And we have a pass interference call. Okay, for Newton North on the coverage, you have David Quinn along with David Lewis. And, and the, the call up. is going to be interference against Newton North. That'll be a first down for Brookline. Pass interference on the play. The play is marked off from the line of scrimmage, correct, Alan? Yes, it is. Marked off from the 23. That'll give him a 10-yard mark off back to the 13. And it's a first down. I'm sorry, 15-yard mark off down to the 8. First and 15 on the 8-yard line. Brookline knocking on the door with 36 seconds left in the first half of a scoreless ball game. The 88th okay. annual Turkey Day Classic between Brookline and Newton. First and goal from the 8-yard line for Brookline. Woodfield, the lone back with quarterback Carthorne. Carthorne spins to the five. Langston's inside the five to the four-yard line. Clock still running down to 28 seconds. Time is called. And time out. takes a timeout. Timeout on the field. They ran that time by Langston Carthorne, who was I hit initially. Ball is on the a very fast-moving first half because line. of the... A lot of running. A lot running. of running. And yeah, we like that, Alan. Keep that clock running. And we've mentioned it a couple of times, this crowd is incredible, Jerry. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you. It's a I've social done, event. I've done none of my Northeastern University games to have a crowd like this. <laughs> Brooklyn well, no, is second down and goal. Ball's at the four-yard line when we come back to action as Lyson Coughlin is getting some equipment repairs. A lot of people are here for, you know, for the traditional Thanksgiving Day game and then leave. But a lot of them must have stuck around. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is the weekend, here for the weekend. And we have a great crowd here at Parsons Field. Of course, for everyone who lives in the area knows we were hit by a Thanksgiving day, a Thanksgiving morning snowstorm that uh, postponed just about all of the local high school football games, and most of them are being played today on Saturday. As Brookline's a 
Second down and goal from the four-yard line. Carthorn, quarterback draw, down to the two. He's close to the one-yard line. Another timeout as we're down to 23 seconds to go. Frankson came back. back the ball. They're down at the one-yard line. Again, timeout by Brookline. It'll be third and goal. Another player from last year's team, Michael Bat, outstanding linebacker. Back for today's game. Yeah, there's a good shot of the defense for Newton North trying to stop this third and goal. Coach Peter Mead, Sparrow, Spera, Rizzuti, and McEwen all in on this play. Third down, the third down and goal. Caballo, the running back along with Corey Whitfield. Cawthorn. Quarterback keeper, Langston dies. He's very close. Waiting for the referees to see what they're going to do. Timeout. Someone's yelling for a timeout. Timeout. Yeah, time 12 out seconds line. left. Down to 12 seconds. Brookline. Coach Rizzuti was practically hollering for a timeout. <laughs> when he saw him. The players were all excited, waiting for the officials to give a call for a touchdown. <laughs> the clock runner. <laughs> 12 time seconds to go. Line. And... <laughs> Brookline offense a fourth and goal. The ball is now inside the one yard line, about a half yard away from a touchdown. Okay, now Brookline has used all their timeouts. We will be continuing our coverage of uh, Brookline High School sports sometimes in January with hockey and basketball coverage. Looking forward to it. What a great effort by Cablevision to bring the high school sports to the to the parents, the kids themselves, and the whole town. Okay, keep play right here. Either a scoreless tie at halftime or Brookline ahead. Fourth and goal. Balls inside the one. Defensive front digging in for Newton North. The crowd yelling the again. <laughs> the middle is stacked up. Cawthorn dives. Touchdown. Set this up with that punch, Allen. That 74 yard punch brought the ball back down. They ended up getting the ball back on offense on the 45 of uh, their own 45, but down they went to score. Key play by Cawthorn because Newton North actually had the middle clogged. They're, they're playing for the quarterback, keeps the Cawthorn, delayed his put second, and then dove over to the left side behind his left guard to get the touchdown. And a pass interference call, a key play. I believe it was on Kenan Bigby. That was our uh, Ross. Ross. Uh, Jeremy was Ross. The, uh, Key interference to put the ball on the uh, seven or eight yard line. Okay, Cawthorn tries to get to point. Stephen Nelson holds. Langston gets it up. And it goes through. So, with nine seconds to go in the half, Brookline scores first here in the 88th annual Thanksgiving Day Classic. Brookline comes back up field with his lead, seven to nothing. And a touchdown was called back. By Newton. And that looks really huge now. Oh, baby, does it ever. As well as a touchdown, as I mentioned, you'll see that the, power. the middle of the defense for Newton North does have the quarterback sneak covered, but Cawthorn goes to his left, dives, and makes the touchdown. Good job up front by that interior line and the blocking for the Brookline High School team. 7 nothing now as there'll be time for the kickoff and maybe one play. Brooklyn has to be careful here, though. They can't let anything crazy happen on this kickoff. That's right. Lager's back. You have in the middle is David Quinn, and to his left is David Lewis. As a matter of fact, the Brooklyn, the Newton North team is expecting a squib kick as uh, the deep backs are only at the 20-yard line. Number 22 for Newton, David Quinn. Is deep. Okay, Cawthorn sets a kick off. With Lewis and Ledger and up high. It to the 38 yard line, picked up by Delcandro. 45, Delcandro onto the 47 yard line with two seconds to go before halftime. So there will be time for one offensive play by the Newton North Tigers. Stopped by Hoyas Narcissi and Chris Kira Patkin into the tackle. Three, 
Okay, we've seen quarterback Brandon here go deep downfield twice so far today. Or well, actually once. He's at their own, his own 47-yard line time for one play. Well, he's got the arm to do it. He has good size on him. He's 6'1", 170-pound junior. Number seven, Brandon here. Has Bradder in the backfield. Leg goes to wide receiver to the right. Okay, it's time a handoff, though. David Lewis, and he'll be hit and dropped at the 40-yard line. That'll be into the first half. Number 81, Mike Fenton got him from behind to win the half. Brookline leading 7-0. Okay, there's your, you have the two just going off. To okay, halftime score here at Parsons Field in Brookline. 7 0 as there you see the Brookline High School Indians leading the Newton North Tigers. We'll have second half action coming up. Seven yard run around right end. We have some stats for you, Jerry. So up on the screen there, you can look at the yardage for both teams. Newton's favor, rushing yardage, of course, is in Brooklyn. Uh, total yardage of Brookline's favor. First downs, uh, four Newton, three to Brooklyn. We have some individual stats. The rushing for Brooklyn, for Newton, Rata, eight rushes for 32 yards. Lewis, seven rushes for 23 yards. Hare, four rushes for 17 yards. Passing Hare, two for, four, for 14 yards. Receiving Fletcher, one for 10. Casey, one for four. And we'll give you Brookline stats after this kickoff. Okay, set to kickoff for Brookline. Lanson Cawthorn back deep. You have Lynch in the middle. He's flanked by Lewis and Lager. 7 nothing. Brookline leads. Kicking off to Newton North to start the second half. Kick's going to come bounce to David Lewis, the 23-yard line. Lewis to the 30. David Lewis. Works his way out to the 33-yard line. That's when Newton North will take over to start the second half. Number 84, Len Davis and Lynch and Jesse Ritter on that tackle for Brookline. 39 yards rushing offense. We have Langston Cawthorn, five rushes, 14 yards, one touchdown. Corey Whitfield, nine rushes, 17 yards. Malik Cavallo, two carries for nine yards. Andrew Gamir, one catch for five. Michael Kelleher, one catch for 13 yards. And... Corey Whitfield, one catch for 12 yards. Shotgun formation. This is the same way that Newton North started the game. Their first play of the game was a shotgun. First play of the second half. Here is also back in the shotgun. Looking to the right sideline. Throws it out there. It's Quinn. Good catch and a good tackle. Coming up on the stop. Chris Kirapatkin. Chris Kirapatkin. Lynch did hold on, though, after that big hit. On defense for Brookline Live, four tackles for Dave Lynch. Four tackles for Asafa Levy. Four tackles for Mike Fenton, Matt Lopakine, two tackles and one interception. Excellent job by the Brookline defense. They were had their back to the wall many times in that first half, Allen, and came that's, away unscathed. That's very true. Okay, that first down pass was good for eight yards. Second down and two. Here's handoff. Radda right the middle. First down and more. Good running by David Radda. Flag thrown in the Newton backfield, probably for an illegal motion, Alan. Okay, as the officials are sorting this one out, it is going to be a motion penalty against Newton. That'll cost him the first down because Radda was able to gain seven yards in that play. That'll be wiped out. And it'll be second and seven. Seven nothing. Brookline leads. Just underway here in the second half. Alan Platt and Jerry Walsh in our final Brookline High School football cable cast of the season. Our final suburban league football That's right. broadcast. Yeah. Okay, second down is seven after that five-yard walk-off. Back to the shotgun goes Newton North. They have a double-wide formation here with Lager and David Quinn out to the left. Going to the left goes here. Fakes the pass, now he's going to run. 40, good running room right here. Midfield, cuts back inside, out to the sideline, and he's knocked down inside Brookline territory, the Brookline 42-yard line. Shiny King makes the tackle. Had Shiny King not get him there, that could have gone for a lot longer. Brandon here is showing some excellent, there's a good shot of here, number seven, the quarterback for Newton North, some excellent running skills. As that time, he rolled out to his left side where he had sent two receivers 
from the left, deep downfield to clear out that zone. Big game for Newton North, first down in Brookline territory at the 40, actually the 41-yard line. Big gain by Brennan here. Newton North handoff this time. David Lewis gets to the 40 and stopped right there. Inside defense for Brookline. Lynch, Bowman, Lopakane. Most of the uh, running that Newton North has been having success with has usually been off tackle. Uh, inside the guards and, and right in the middle has been very tough for them so far. Well, they had an excellent run by Ratter in the first stop. The first time he ran with the ball, he opened up a wide hole. But since then, Brookline has contained them fairly well. Okay, it's going to be second down and nine. Give Lewis one yard in that last play. Brandon here, the quarterback. Fakes, back to pass. Rolling to his right. Has some running room. 40. Cuts back inside. Loses footing and falls down about the 37-yard line. He is upset with himself because he thinks he had room to go a lot further than that. Chris Kirapatkin led the charge. Okay, there we have a flag give. on the play. Personal foul. Personal foul Brooke against Brookline. This is the second one of the game. That's going to give Newton North the first down and also put the Tigers deep, deeper in Brookline territory. Yes, yeah, it's being mopped off inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. Well, we talked about emotion. That's that's the the kind of uncontrolled emotion you really don't want. It hurts the team. Now they're great field position. Excellent okay. field position. Now Brookline's defense 10. has to suck it up and do right. it again. First attempt from Brookline's 18-yard line. This Newton North offense. The, the offense for Newton North has moved the ball. But as you mentioned, they've, they've gotten close. Brookline's defense has played well. First Newton, and ten Newton, from the Brookline. Newton's defense 18. has played fairly well also. Handoff. Lewis hitting the backfield and dropped for a loss of two. Eric Horsley came across the line and was able to grab Lewis around the legs and knock him down at the 25-yard line. Nobody touched Horsley. He was all alone. The running ran right into him. Okay, I, I mistakenly said the 18. It was actually the 23-yard line where the first down play came from. So that loss of two takes it back to the 25. Second down and 12. Second and 12 as back shift out of the eye. In motion goes David Quinn to the right. Back to pass. You have here looking down to the corner. Incomplete as the ball was simply dropped. Nice pass. John Friedis, the intended receiver. And after, that one in. and after Hare got rid of the ball, Asaf Halevi threw him to the ground. A little bit of a mix up there. The Brookline surge of the defensive line that kept pushing the offensive line back into Hare, and they were lucky to get that ball off at all. Hare was held up, then he made himself a little room by stepping back deeper into the backfield as he rolled to his right. Third down and two. I'm sorry, third down and 12. Here on a blitz, the pass is going to be picked up. Halevi. It was a screen <laughs> pass intended for David Lewis. Hasaf Halevi. Great so pressure was put on the pass up. There's a penalty by David mark Lynch. on the play. The penalty mark on the play, though, and we'll see what that call is going to be. But still a good play by Halevi, number 55, as he was covering the back coming out of the backfield. David Lewis completely. The pass was still thrown by Brandon here, and Halevi picked it off. But We'll watch this, this penalty call here. Now you'll see David Lynch going right after the passer here. And here comes Lynch coming right at him. And he just throws right over here. The only player here was Asaf Alevi. Okay, a personal foul again against Brookline. It appears to be after the play, though. So Brookline will retain the ball. They'll be, they'll be mopped off. 15 yards. Well, at least they didn't lose possession. That's a break. They'll keep the ball. Some of these haircuts that these Brookline kids got are awesome right now. <laughs> That's the annual Indian cut. Right. Mm -hmm. Mike Fenton's having an excellent game. His, his first game back where he's playing a lot. He played a little bit in the Brockton game, but he's playing every down here, and he's doing an excellent job. Okay, Brookline, first and 10, balls at their own 19-yard line. 
They lead 7-0. We're here in the third quarter. Fumble on the snap. Picked up by Cawthorn as he surges ahead for maybe a gain of two. Come forward for a couple. Mishandling between center and quarterback on the play. Langston fell right on the ball and advanced it. A couple of yards anyway. Okay, so that'll be a gain of two, second down and eight. Brown stays in the eye formation with Corey Whitfield deep back in the eye. Hand off to Whitfield, cuts 25, Corey Whitfield 30. Faces off his run at the 34-yard line. That'll be a first down for Brookline. It was a quick burst of speed as soon as Corey got the ball that time. Tackle by Richie Ledger. That's what Brookline's offense has done all year. Allen, as you well know, give the ball to Whitfield. He finds that hole, and he's history, and he blew right through the hole that time. Okay, first down. The ball is not quite at the 35-yard line. Down to 6.55 to go in the third quarter. Parsons Field, a field Parsons Field, eh? Langston Cawthorn fakes the handoff. Now it's to Whitfield trying to get some room. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, and he'll be dropped for a loss of three yards on that play. He was hit by two ball players, and then finally uh, brought down Good on the right side defense. of the field. That, you mentioned the fact that Rook Lions defense has played well, and Newton North. Uh, the Tigers that time were able to get Whitfield behind the line of scrimmage and hit him for a two-year loss. Second down and a long 12 now. Andrew Gamir comes wide as the receiver to the right. Now going in motion to the right is Corey Whitfield. Rolling to the right is quarterback Cawthorn looking downfield. Gets away from the first wave, 30, 35, and Cawthorn is out of bounds, close to the 40-yard line. There was a, uh, right in front of him, looked like somebody got him by the face mask. However, the referee was right there, and Langston picked up a good chunk of that uh, yardage. Okay, Cawthorn will be credited there with the gain to the 41-yard line. Let's call it a third down and four now, as Brookline has to get to their own 45 for the first down. The receivers were covered. Langston did a good job by putting the ball down and taking off upfield with it. Picked up a large chunk of that yardage that was taken away in the penalty. Well, what happened is similar to what Newton North did on one of their offensive plays on the, on the play that here was able to make a lot of yardage. Uh, the receiver on that side, Andrew Gamir, went on a deep flat pattern. Also, going in motion was Corey Whitfield. He went downfield. That cleared out the zone, right. giving Cawthorn the good option to either pass or the run, and he ran for a good game. Third down and four. Whitfield, 40, 45, midfield. Corey Whitfield cuts back, 40. Whitfield down inside Newton North Territory to the 36-yard line. Another first down for the Brookline High School Indians. Excellent run by Corey Whitfield. He blew right around the, uh, the right end at number 80 for Newton. Richie Ledger had a shot at him, but Corey cut it back toward the inside and picked up an additional 10 or 15 Let's yards. Let's do some credit up front on that. This is the replay here. Whitfield, big hole. His ledger with a shot at him here, but he just breaks it right yeah, up. And nice cut. Let's get some credits to Jesse Ritter and Jason Liu, number 70 and 73. Also, Matt Maroney on that right side doing the blocking for those runs. Here comes Malik Cavallo, big coast to the left side this time. Inside the 20, down to about the 16. And a flag on the a play. Flag. A Newton ball player somehow came up with the football. Yeah, Newton said there's a fumble. There's a flag on the play. And we'll wait until we see the ruling from the officials. Well, we talked about the versatile foul line. against Newton. <laughs> Takes the ball down at about the uh, nine-yard line, Allen. That's that'll take it inside the ten to the nine, right? Okay. On that play, let's talk about Eric Horsley, along with Zeke Bowman. I said Zeke Bowman, the left side of the line. That's right. And Zeke's, we haven't mentioned Zeke's name much this year at all, but he and Hosley certainly opened up a wide hole that side that time. Five oh seven left. Woodfield hit and dropped for a loss of two. Excellent play by linebacker David Ratter again. I'm sorry, Mike Ratter. That time Ratter came out of blitz guessing that Woodfield would get the ball. Woodfield got it. 
And just as he got the ball, Rattler got him. So down at the 11-yard line, loss of two. It's to be second down and goal. Down to 440 to go up third quarter. Brookline still leads Newton North, seven nothing here. Andrew Gamere bringing in the play from Coach McEwen. Split backs behind quarterback Cawthorn. Fake the handoff. Here's a pitch to Whitfield. 15, cuts back into the 10. Corey Whitfield still driving, still on his feet. Corey Whitfield down, dives to the above the two yard line. Excellent running individual efforts by Corey Whitfield. I thought he was down twice. It looked like there was going to be dropped with about three or four people on him, but somehow Corey squared it free and ran down to the two yard line. Excellent run by Corey Whitfield. That's the Corey Whitfield that Coach McEwen and the staff gave the award to. You'll Let's see right that one again. Play. You see, there's there he the comes. He, there's the pitch from Cawthon. He's running right, uh, avoids one tackle. There's three guys on him right there. He bangs away, two guys on him right there, and he goes down to the three-yard line. Excellent run by Corey Whitfield. You see why he, the coaches say he's the most improved, Allen. Third and goal, balls at the three-yard line. Whitfield spins down to about the one. He'll be stopped short there. And now Brookline goes. Bill McEwen have a choice here, fourth and goal. Number 77 for... Uh, Newton Camo Harris, five foot seven, 200 pounds, led the charge. The clock running down to three twenties to go in the third quarter. Brookline still leads seven, nothing. Ball is on the three, two yard line. Two yard line, fourth and goal. And I thought Cawthorn didn't like what he saw. Timeout. Good play by Langston. You don't like what you see, a new defensive wrinkle thrown at you, call timeout. Excellent drive by Brookline. Big running by Whitfield. And again, let's give some credit up front because Jesse Ritter, Jason Liu, Zeke <laughs> Bowman, Eric Horsley are doing an excellent job interior blocking. That's right. Here's a great stat from uh, Danny Kelly. The first half, Corey Whitfield raced for, 70, for 17 yards. This drive alone, 43 yards. So Whitfield has 60 on the game. He's well on his so way to far. another 100 yard game, which he was the bright star of the. Uh, Brockton lost with 117 yards. And as you say, Alan, the offensive line, both sides of the offensive line, opening up great holes. Well, Newton North had pretty much figured out the offensive schemes of Brookline in the first half, and they were they were holding Whitfield, like you just mentioned, the 17 yards in the first half. That's unheard of for Corey. This half, this drive specifically, 43 yards in this drive, and now Brookline faces a very key fourth down and goal. Balls to the two-yard line. They already lead 7 nothing. Coach McEwen has his team going for the touchdown. Cawthorn, fake, dives, slices. Yeah, touchdown. Lenny! Yeah, Lenny! He just took the yeah, hole. The Again, the offensive line opening up great holes for the Allen, and Langston goes in for the score, the second touchdown of the day for Senior. Langston Cawthon, and Langston is going out in fine style. Well, good execution that time because you mentioned the blocking, but also good faking because what Cawthon did, he had his backs all rolling to the left sideline, giving him room to take a choice where he saw a hole and to cut inside for the touchdown. Then you see the backs going to the left. Cawthon cuts inside, sees the hole, has the touchdown. That's and now Langston by Horsley, Bowman, and Matt Maroney on that side of the line. The kick up by Cawthorn is going to go wide, and that's no good as it was deflected that time by number 65. That's Tim Champagne who got in there. So yep. the score stays at 13 nothing as 305 remains in the third quarter. The teams come back upfield. Brookline will be kicking off to Newton North. That's the kind of drives we've been accustomed to, Alan. With Corey Long Whitfield. sustained on the ground. Just eat up the clock. Run, run, run. Great run by Malik Cavallo. We can't forget Malik Cavallo. Corey Whitfield made a great run downfield, and Malik Cavallo. Took one and cut the other way to put them in better field position. And on that play, I believe, was when they had the on that, the personal foul and the ball was moved back way down inside Newton territory. Nine yard line, right. And Matt Lopakin, of course, a steady job from the center spot. Matt Lopakin. It's interesting. It. It's, uh, it's something we need to say, given this is the last game, because during the course of the year, you're all talking about the running backs, the wide receivers, and the quarterback, but the kids up front who have to, did actually the first line of the attack. We do our best to give everyone all, as many kids as credit as we can. We don't see every play, we do our best, and we hope that all the kids know that they've done a great job. The coaching staff has done a great job. Newton has played a super ball game. Newton defense has played a super ball game. And they have a lot of offense. Game. Like, they're, they're and they've done they very, very well. Ball. That's right. Looking forward to this uh, last 305 of the third quarter and that final fourth period. Get in the 
I love the linebacking core of Brookline. They're very active. They hit hard. They're very seldom out of any plays, Alan. Okay, Cawthorn to kick off. His kickles go to go spin. Uh, it's just going to bounce out of bounds. And the Brookline will kick off after a five yards walk off. That was a good Actually, kick. David Lewis got a little, little scared there. He thought it was going to stay in the field of play, yeah. but it angled off to the sideline. We'll do it again. This time, Brooklyn will kick off from their own 35 yard line. Lewis is back to receive number four, along with Quinn, number 22, in the middle, and Lager, number 80, off to the right side. 13 0, Brooklyn leads. Excellent crowd here at Parsons Field. Not a bad day for football. Yeah, it turned out very well. I mean, the, the postponement due to the snow was uh, well worth it because, as you mentioned, being on Astro Trip out here, just to plow it off. There you go. Makes it much better for the players. Coughlin again. Sets a kick from his 35 this time. Again, keeps it low. Down the middle, picked up. This is going to be Casey to the 45-yard line. And Brookline, on the short kick, gives up Good field position to the uh, Tigers of Newton North. Jeremy Ross was the guy who had him by the ankles, and he helped, had help, but Jeremy Ross was the guy who had him first. Okay, the Tigers of Newton North, led by their quarterback, Brandon Hare. 3-0-1 to go in the third quarter. Brooklyn leading 15-0. Back to the shotgun goes Newton North. Rada and Lewis are next to the quarterback here. Gets the snap. Flag on the play. Yeah, we have a uh, motion penalty, it looks like, a procedure penalty against Newton North. That'll cost him five yards, make it first and 15. Takes the ball back to the Newton North 40-yard line. Len Davis in for Eric Chorsley. And the wind starts kicking up again, yes. going from our right to left, so it, it, for the rest of the third quarter, it'll be to the back of the Newton North offense. Deep drop. Fakes, now he's hit and dropped. It's gonna be the Davis. 84, Len Davis, Len Davis on, the, on the blitz. Bowman, but pressure was put on the other side by Jesse Ritter. He came one way, Quinn, uh, Brendan Hare went the other way, and there was Len Davis and Zeke Bowman to lower the boom. And deep downfield, you had Shawnee King and Chris Kirapatkin on deep coverage to allow Davis the time to get in there for that tackle. So, after that loss, second down and 21 now. The 20 to 20, uh, second and 20 from the Newton North 35-yard line. So it's a fake handoff, pitch to Del Cantro, trying the sidelines up to the 37-yard line before Brookline fumble on the play as the whistle now blows, and Newton North will keep the ball. A lot of scurrying around the ground for that ball. Okay, on the recovery from Newton North, the offensive tackle, Andy Glantz. Brookline's defensive backs have done an excellent job on coverage today. Malik Cavallo and Langston Cawthorn, Kenan Bigby, Shiny King, anyone who's back there. Okay, and, game uh, of two, call it third down 18. Still in the shotgun. Double wide receivers to the left now. You have Quinn and Lager. It comes here, rolling to his left. Looks deep downfield. Lewis threw his hands incomplete. The ball was thrown a little too much on it for Lewis, but threw his hands. On the and as you say, Joseph Levy fell incomplete. And Newton will be forced to punt now with a fourth down and 18. Okay, back to kick is David Quinn, number 22. And to receive for Brookline in single safety will be quarterback Langston Cawthorn. High snap, dropped down by Quinn. He gets off a high kick. The bounce about the 45 and take a Newton North bounce inside the 30. To the 20, still rolling. <laughs> 
be about the 23-yard line. So with 1.10 to go in the third period, Brookline's offense comes back in the field. From a kick that looked like it wasn't going anywhere. Again, the wind. The wind right. just started kicking up the two plays ago. And that high kick, for the good bounce actually helped out on the yardage for that kick. Brookline has the first attempt at their own 23-yard line, 22-yard line. 13 nothing. Carthorne brings out his offense. Has Kenan Bigby in the backfield along with Corey Whitfield who now flanks out to the left. Jeremy Watt, Ross, wide receiver to the right. Here goes Whitfield in motion. Long count, handoff to Bigby. Up Flag the middle. The play. Call's gonna be play's gonna be called back as a flag right before the play got underway, but it's still a good running effort by Kenan Bigby, the sophomore. Ted Delacandro made the two. stop. It's gonna be against Brooklyn. That'll be, that'll be mocked off five yard penalty. Illegal motion penalty on Brookline. <laughs> Second down, or first down, 15 after that five yard mark off. Andrew Gamir now on it, wide receiver to the right. Handoff is to Corey Whitfield, hit behind the line and dropped. Good tackle again that time by Mike Maradona. And we're down inside 20 seconds to go before the end of the third period. 30-0, Brookline leads on two touchdowns by Lance and Cawthorn. Cawthorn also has one Point after, he missed this last one. As the clock winds down. Yeah, Brookline's just gonna let it run out. Okay, so at the end of three quarters here at Parsons Field in Brookline. The score, Brookline High School 13, Newton North, nothing. Dre Walsh, now on flat, will come back with fourth quarter action after this break. Complete the 40, we're going to the 45, 46 yard line. Not Flag on the play. Now be first down for Brookline. Excellent pass and catch I think by Lance and Cawthorn and Matt Maroney. Holding call against Brookline. Now bring all the way back. Excellent yes. pass, catch, run play by Cawthorn to Maroney, but there was a flag on the play. Just on the way here, fourth period action. As you see, the officials ready to mop this one off. It's been a tough drive with two penalties already in the yep. first three plays. So they'll take the ball back inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Second down and 22. Brook line with a 13 nothing lead behind Lanson Cawthorn with two touchdowns. I formation, handoff Corey Whitfield, hit behind the line of scrimmage, excellent play. The 42, the other part David the Ratter. <laughs> David Ratter in there for that tackle. So, this entire drive's been going backwards. Now, Brookline's back to the seven yard line. They have a third and 25. 11 20 left in the ball game. Okay, you see a, a deep shot going to miss you that third down punt again by Cawthorn, and he's going to let. Gonna kick it. David Quinn lets it bounce. Close to midfield, back into Newton North territory at the 49 yard line where the Tigers of Newton North take over. Let's give him some credit. Good defense, couple of, couple of breaks on the penalties also. But again, Newton North hanging in, brings their offense back on the field. Newton North's defense has played very well all day long.
Brian here, quarterback, junior quarterback for Newton North. Brings his offense out. David Lewis, along with David Retta. Hand off, Lewis, midfield, 45. Good run by David Lewis. Asaf Alevi, number 55, senior co-captain and linebacker in on the tackle. Okay, nice six-yard run for Lewis. That'll bring up a second down and four. We're down to 10.45 to go. I think at this point, Jerry, the way Brookline's defense has played, Newton North Tigers have to get something out of this drive. That's right, kind of score. that's right. Well, Newton had their chances to score in the first half, Alan. Plenty of opportunities to score. In motion goes Lager. Hand off. This is going to be Lewis again. First down and more. Inside the Good run by Lewis. Six-yard line. Stopped by David Lynch. He found a hole. Got low, Alan. Got real low to the ground. A scooter into the secondary. Where again, Lynch keep up. Mike Brad, number right. 50 up front. Right. Here's Newton of offense. Knowing they have to score soon for any chance to win the game. They're down 13-0. Quinn goes in motion. Here, handoff, Rado, up the middle. Good tackling, Malik Cavallo gets some help. That time from David Lynch, Mike Fenton. Also Halevi again. Okay, right, I got a quick four yard. That time was called second down and six. Balls Lynch. just inside the Brookline 35 yard line, close to the 34. Lynch comes out and Yoyas Narcissi is in. <laughs> okay, second down and six. <laughs> Del Arcandro now in the game now. Here, being. Chase goes to the sidelines, trying to get some running room. Good fake there, gets out of bounds, close to the first down marker. He'll be about a yard short. Number 77 for Newton, a defensive lineman, Kyle offensive lineman, I'm sorry, Camo Harris, 5'7", 200, held off the block, held off the rushing Len Davis and allowed Hare to get outside. Okay, also by going out of bounds, quarterback here stopped the clock, bring up a third down and two. Ball's right on the 30-yard line of Brookline. Nine minutes, 12 seconds left. Back to pass in the fake. Here, got some running room. Downfield, the pass is going to be too long and incomplete as it, it, he floated the ball up there trying to be real careful getting to David Quinn, but... Langston Cawthon almost picked it up. And it fell incomplete. So, fourth down, two yards to go. They're long too, Alan. And it's a key play, very key play for the Tigers here. Down to 9.05, Rick Lyons defense. Ready to try to top, stop this fourth down play. Again, in the backfield, Ryder and David Lewis. Here, rolls to his right, has a little room, looks downfield, the pass is gonna be complete for the first down inside the 30, close to the 26 yard line. That's where Newton North will keep the drive alive. That's Corey K Casey. It's stopped Corey by Casey. Langston Cawthon. Cawthon made the tackle after Casey pulled it in, number 41. Let's watch it again. Good execution as you'll see the fake inside. There it is, roll out to the right. Here, lets it go. Nice bullet pass to Casey at the 26-yard line. Cawthorn came from the city spot to make the tackle. Newton's eating up the clock here, too, Allen. First and 10, balls to the Brookline 26-yard line. Brandon here, straight back to pass. Gets some pressure, throws deep to the sideline. Quinn, five-yard line, touchdown, Newton North. Excellent play. Good play, good throw, good catch. Oh, perfect throw. Perfect, perfect throw, throw. that time because Shawnee King actually had decent coverage on the play. Quinn made a quick move to the sideline at the last second. The ball was right on the money. Touchdown, 26 yards out. And Newton North is right back. And I mentioned they had the score. They had the score this on this drive. They had the score on this 
uh, try. They've been had plenty of scoring opportunities before and fell short. This time they come up with the touchdown. Yeah, I have to say it was set up very well with the fact they kept throwing, throwing to the right, and then that touchdown was a deep throw to the left. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So right back into this. down to eight off. and a half minutes to go in the game. We're in the fourth quarter here. As the and Newton North Tigers finally have a touchdown that stays on the scoreboard. It's a replay replay. The touchdown. You see excellent, excellent play here. Excellent run uh, pass by Quinn, by Hare. Throw to Quinn, right over his shoulder. Takes it, turns up field, and then he goes. Good coverage by King, but the pass beat him. And in for the score, and we have a ball game. 13-7, eight minutes and 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Brookline leading 13-7. But you mentioned the clock, Jerry, and with 8.30 to go, the Brookline offense now will have the job of trying to take some of that clock away from the Newton North offense. If their running game was successful early on in this particular half, Alan, if they get their running game going again and happen to push it in for another score, they can eat up five or six minutes of this clock. Okay, we see the Newton North team staying up to kick. Deep kick comes down to Shawnee King at about the 12, 15, signs to the 20, 25 yard line. Shawnee King hit and dropped right at the 30 yard line where the Brookline offense will take over. Jason Fletcher, who's been a standout, had an interception earlier in the game. He's the one who makes the tackle for Newton. Brookline takes over on downs. Takes over on downs. Takes over on first down. With first down, right. <laughs> Okay, and slight break for Brookline here is uh, Mike Ratto was shaking up a bit on that kickoff return, so he's gonna come out at least for one play. He's been a standout today for Newton. There's your score in your time, 8.24 to go in the game, 13-7. Brookline leads as they come out first and 10, balls at their own 30-yard line. Timeout, Newton. Time off for Newton North. <laughs> yes, they actually had to take the time off. Radha was going to come back in the game. Yeah. Uh, Radha had was injured or shaken up on the kickoff, so he there was an official time off for that injury. He walked to the sideline, but then came back in the game. And in order for him to stay, right. they had to take the time out. Now, Brooklyn, I think it's imperative that they do something on this drive. Well, they have to get at least three or four first downs, definitely, because we, we, have to we still have 8.24 to go. Whether they score or not, if they score... That'll be it. That'll if they, be even it. If, if they don't score, the if they take enough of the time, all, time away, then it'll make it very tough for North, North to come back. But again, let's remember, uh, after the second touchdown, Brookline missed the conversion, so they're only up at six points. Well, if they do score, they're going for two, hopefully. Lansing Cawthorn brings his offense out. I formation, Malik Caval, the fullback. Tailback is Corey Whitfield. Handoff is going to be to Whitfield. Tries the right side. And he's hit and dropped at about the 34-yard line. That's where Brookline will face his second down and six. Coach Peter Capodilupo jumping up and down on the sideline. He's kept, I'll tell you, he's kept his players. He's got his <laughs> hat back on, too. How he tries the entire game. Fight. He's done a great job firing his Newton boys up. The ball sits at the 34 yard line, gain of actually gain of three, so call second down and seven. Wide receiver out to the left is Andrew Gamir. And here's a handoff. Cavallo, he hits straight ahead. And he's dropped the 39 yard line. He's given five yards for Malik. Third down and two. Brookline leading 13-7. We're in the fourth quarter. Alan Platt and Jerry Walsh, our final cable cast of the season. The traditional Thanksgiving Day game. Played a couple of days later. Jeremy Ross brought the play in from Coach McEwen. Third and two. Brookline has to convert this, Alan. Okay, Newton North shows blitz. 
Handoff. This is going to be Cavallo. He dies the first, first down. down. Good second effort by Malik Cavallo. Excellent. That first down. Right over Eric Horsley for the first down. He ran right over the hole created by Eric Horsley for the first down. But good hard running by Malik Cavallo. Okay, clock down, down to 6.45 to go in the game. 13-7, still the score. I think we may see the Newton North defense take some chances on some blitzes at this point. And uh, Whitfield, he'll be dropped for a big loss. And that's just what I was talking about, taking some chances. A cornerback blitz that time, Jerry. Fletcher got him low, and number 27, V.J. Farina, got him high and brought him down for a loss. Okay, Fletcher. Came out the blitz that time. Clock is running. Look, I lost about seven yards. That's exactly what Newton North wanted to do. They guessed that time that it would be a run to Whitfield, and it was. Second down, 15. Shotgun formation. Batson passes Cawthorn. Rolls to his right. Looks down. He's being chased by Rada. Let's it go, and it's going to be fall. It's going to fall short and incomplete. And that will stop the clock for Newton North. And that came perilously close to being intentional grounding, Allen. Had a receiver in the area, but it was still thrown about 10 yards short. You're right. He wasn't even in the same <laughs> zip code <laughs> in the area. <laughs> Newton North defense has stayed in there, played very well. Especially after that big disappointment in the first quarter of losing that touchdown. That's right. Okay, key play for both sides. Third down, 15 yards to go for a first down. Brookline has the ball and the lead. That's a pass, draw play. It's going to be Whitfield hit, spins away. 40-yard line, courage to the 43, where he stopped well short of the first down, and Brookline will be forced to punt. He might have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage there only on sheer second effort. Okay, right, Jay, that's just where he got. 43-yard line will be a fourth down and... Fourth down and 10. Fourth down, actually fourth and 11, so... We can expect to see Lance and Cawthorn in deep punt formation. Now, also, from Newton's side, I'm pretty sure you're going to see Lega number 80, try to field this punt, that's right. not let it bounce. Okay. Lance with the snap. Good kick's going to roll off the side here and bounce out of bounds at the 27-yard line. That's where the Newton North Tigers take over. We have five away to go. Plenty of time left for Newton to do something, but Brookline's defense, again, has to get tough. They've been tough all day. They have to keep it up and not allow Newton to penetrate that end zone. I think if you're a senior for either one of these teams, this is just the way you want your career to end. Right, right. <laughs> if you're, especially if you're on the field with one of these units, either on defense for Brookline or offense for Newton. And we've noticed, just like Brookline, many of the Newton North players do play both ways. That's right. Camu Harris comes out over the ball at center for Newton. Fake handoff to Rada. Rolling out to the left. This is here. Hit by Halevi. Excellent, excellent defensive oh. pursuit by Asaf Halevi. And he brings him down for... A loss of yeah, two yards. The 25-yard line, or 26-yard line, actually. Let's call it a second down and 11. I That's the same play. Playing one whale of a game. That's the, watch it again. You'll see this is the same play we've seen Watch the pursuit earlier. by number 55. He stays two right, fakes. right on the tail. Here he goes, right there. He chases him. Bang, brings him down. Good play by Asaf Second Olivia. down and 11 for the Tigers from Newton North. That's a pass here. Looks deep downfield, over the middle, it's going to be it. excellent. It no, oh my, we got incomplete. Lager, that looked good from here, but the referees who were on the other side of the ball who had a clear shot of it, ruled incomplete. Good ball. throw by here. Very good throw, kept it low to not have a possibility of having it picked off. Lager just couldn't quite pull it in. Third down and 11 now for Newton North Tigers. Time down to 421 to go. Newton trails 13 to 7. Well, well, you'll see this replay from our angle. It looks like he might have caught the ball, but the referee was on the other side of the field. He 
evidently clearly saw it bounce. Okay, Lego, yeah, it did bounce away after Lego initially got his hands on it. Key play here for the Newton defense, Newton offense, rather, third and 11. Coach McEwen extolling his defense here. and 11 key third down last time Newton had a key third down like this they converted down the other end Allen eventually nice pass from score. Um, here to Colin Casey this time they have a third and 11 shotgun formation Casey has in the backfield with him Rada and Lewis Lagers wide to the left Quinn's wide to the right Hook line pressuring and the sack. Jesse Ritter, number 70, Jesse Ritter, flew through the hole and was able to drop here for the fourth down. A key play, fourth and 20 or 25 let's now. Call fourth down, about 21. As, as you mentioned, Jesse Ritter, and again, let's give some credit to the defensive backfield for Brookline. The coverage was there. Here had at least five seconds to try to get, the, get a receiver, but couldn't find anybody open. Had to eat the ball for the big loss. So back to punt is Quinn. Hunt comes out and Cawthorn calls for a fair catch and takes it at the Newton North 48 yard, 47 yard line where Brookline will take over. Well, we've got 338 to go. Again. Okay, Newton North brings his defense back out. Okay, if you'll be first and 10. Balls at the 47-yard line of Newton North. Allen and I are going to have to go into uh, heavy discussion here to see <laughs> who our uh, star of the game could be. We have a few candidates. Okay, eye formation. Woodfield is deep back in the eye behind quarterback Cawthorn. And off is going to go to Woodfield. He'll be hit behind the line of scrimmage. Spin still struggles, but thrown for a loss of about a yard. Newton still playing tough. Newton defense playing very, very tough. Well, they're, they're taking their chances. Number they're 32, pleasing. Jason Fletcher playing an excellent game. Loss of two in the play, and Newton takes a quick timeout to stop the clock with 3.26 to go. Newton North is, they're uh, taking their chance right now. They're going to use the timeouts to keep that clock uh, stopped as often as possible, and they're betting that their defense can prevent a first down from Brookline. One first down will do it, because if they get a first down, Newton will be out of uh, timeouts. That's right. They have five and a half, as we learned. <laughs> <laughs> the hard way, yeah? That's right, the hard way. Early Lost on this year. Right. Lost a two on that play, second down and 12 now. Ball's back at the Newton North 49-yard line. Newton North has had some key first down plays. Need a first again. down, Alan, in this drive. Woodfield, the lone back behind Cawthorn. Cawthorn trying to run, gets hit. He's going to be dropped for a loss in his own territory. Back at the 48 yard line in Brookline. Brett Fowley. Third down. Tim Champagne. <laughs> so now Brookline will face a third down and 14. And Newton calls timeout. Oh, yeah, this is, this is it for them. They, they've right. decided that this is going to be the series. They're either going to stop Brookline, get the ball back, or. The Indians have a chance to pretty it's much be done out. here. Third and 14. We have three minutes and 17 seconds to go. Oftentimes, teams don't use timeouts this early with uh, three or four minutes to go, but I think that uh, Coach Captain Lupo wants to have his offense with ample time to not have to really panic. That's right. If they get back on the field. Okay, so we're looking at a third down and 14. Ball's now back in Brookline territory. They're on 49-yard line. To see what kind of defensive alignment Brook North brings out. Okay, they have both Radder brothers at linebacker in the middle coast of the line of scrimmage. And Lance and Cawthorn calls a timeout as there was a switch. It appeared that 
Newton North had an extra defensive back in there. Right. The nickel back, is that what they call it? That's right. Oh, Newton North came out. They were trailing 13 0. They were able to score the last time they had the ball. The last one of the previous times, making a 13 7 score. There it is on your screen. And now they're hoping to stop this third and 14, which would give their offense a chance for another score, which could be the winner. That's right. We mentioned that for the recent years, this has been a, pretty much a home team dominated series. As it, and again, it, it gets back to your point earlier about the fact that these traditional games, the records don't matter. Green and Brookline yeah, won last, last year to Newton, thinking they had a better team, and got beaten by the Tigers. And two years before Newton came here, thinking so they had a better team, right. Brookline beat them here. Okay, Cawthorn rolling out. Nice cut, 50, 40, Lysen Cawthorn, first down, to the 30-yard line. First down, Brookline is Lysen Cawthorn, a naked uh, quarterback keeper coming out to the left sideline, made a quick move. Finally by brought down by, by number 50, Mike Rada, and brought down hard. But Lankford made a nice cut when he saw that 21 opening. 21 yard run. run on that quarterback keeper. Let's watch. You're going to see a good fake at the line of scrimmage by Carthorn. He comes out. Here's Lewis. Nice move on Lewis. As Lewis actually played the pitch man but had no help inside. And Rada came to, to get Carthorn, but much too late. Clock running. 2.55 to go in the game. First and 10 for Brookline at the Newton North 30. Handoff, Cavallo, 25. He's hit and dropped there after a five-yard gain. Tackle right by middle. Mike Bauer. Malik Cavallo just went right up the middle. Good gain for Brookline. Keeps the clock rolling. And now them moving. North takes another timeout. 2.44 to go in the game. Second down and five for Brookline. Well, if anybody's going to make a big play for you, you think it'd be your senior co-captain in Lance and Cawthorn made that play. Nine rushes, 45 yards, and two touchdowns right now. Okay. Brookline huddle. Trying to get themselves set for this second down and five. And now Newton North no is out of timeouts. Newton, Newton North was out of timeouts. The referee blew it. The, the referee kept calling for the clock to run. And another first down, and it's definitely history, Allen. Oh, second down is five feet. You're right. If they score first down and get four more downs, then that, that'll do it. Okay, the official was saying that was Newton North's last time out. Mm -hmm. So, Newton North can't stop the clock themselves anymore. Second and five for Brookline. Showing blitz is Newton. Handoff. Whitfield dropped right at the 25, maybe a half yard gain. Again, Rada. And here we have some penalties, <laughs> some penalty flags being thrown. I well, know number 54 That's from Newton was really upset. Brett Bowerly and David Lynch were going at it deep downfield. Okay, on the on the play, there was a half yard gain by Whitfield, which would make a third down and five. Let's see it with the penalties. If they're offsetting, it won't affect the yardage. There were four flags thrown, so every official down there had something on I it. I saw something, right? Okay, looks like they'll be offsetting penalties as dead ball fouls on Newton, dead ball foul on Brookline. That's offset, so it'll be, there'll be no yards marked off. The play will stand. It's a dead ball, so it'll now be a third down and five. And Coach Capodilupo is wild again. Well, he, he, so he had his play at number 54. Burley was thrown out of the game. He wants to know why Brookline players are leaving. And Burley's a good ball player. Played very well today. He was tangled up with David Lynch deep downfield as Lynch had taken his block uh, down. This started about the 15-yard line. And and well, David now David Lynch is thrown out. out of the okay. game also. Both of them have been thrown out of the ball game. So David Lynch is gone. Also Burley is gone for Newton North. Two key players, even though we're down to 2.24 to go in the game. Okay, let's see who replaces Lynch. Uh, let me see. Levy goes back in the game. Third and five. 13-7, Brookline leading. 2.24 left in the ball game. The ball is on the Newton North 
25 yard line. Newton is out of timeouts. Out of timeouts, third and five, actually. Okay, Brookline has a little less than five. Third down, five to go. Clock starts again. Andrew Gamir back into the lineup for Brookline. Key play for the defense for Newton North. From their standpoint, they really want to try to get a loss in this play because I'm sure Brooklyn will try for the first down on fourth down. Carthorne has one wide one back behind them. Carthorne's going to keep. Here's a pitch to Carthorne to oh, Corey Whitfield. He has a first down, knocked out of bounds inside the 15. Good faking again. Key to the play. The faking by Lanson Carthorne. He made it look like the exact same play. We had the first down at 21 yard run that time instead of keeping it at the last second pitched it out to Whitfield who was able to get down to the Newton North 12 yard line. Alan, we're gonna have to pick a star or stars of the game. But as far as I'm concerned, there are no individual stars in this game. Brookline High School offense and defense have played super this game. They've played Keep super playing, the entire year. As you mentioned. Newton has played super both times, but we will pick star or stars of the game, but in my opinion, the entire Brookline High School team and the Newton team deserve recognition. Okay, Carthorns, fumble the football, and it's going to be recovered by Brookline. Uh, 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 boy, that batted around a little bit. <laughs> well, Brookline, Corey Whitfield came back to cover the football back at about the 12-yard line as Lanson Carthorn, the same quarterback keep play, running to his left, was hit, had the ball jarred loose, Clock still runs, 1.25 to go in the game. Brookline leads 13-7. Newton nope. North defense is now forced to second down and 10. As we said, they're out of timeout, so they can't do anything to stop this clock or anything else. Brookline just keep running it, and the clock will run out. Cawthorn tries it right this time. He's hit and dropped. Just about the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Tim Champagne, number 65, leading the charge for the Newton North Tigers. 55 seconds to go. Clock still runs. <laughs> Alan and I have picked our stars of the game. And they happen to be the co-captains of the Brookline team. Langston Cawthon and Asef Halevi, the fine linebacker who's right now playing right guard, and it's gonna be a delay, delay of game, game penalty against Brookline. They'll make it a third down and 13, but more importantly, the clock is now down to 27 seconds to go in the game. Time for one more play anyway. <laughs> okay, third down. 13, ball's back to the 15-yard line. Newton North will be trying to get a fumble. Oh, Newton love to get their hands on the ball one more time, but the clock is definitely clock not on. in the table. Just kneels down. Keep the clock running. The clock never started. The clock never reason. started. <laughs> <laughs> and that should do it because we're under 25 seconds. Brookline does not have to run another play. Good season for Brookline. They end up seven and three. And we're going down to our field to get an interview with our stars of the game, Langston Cawthon and Asaf Halevi. And there you see a clock running out. As Jerry makes his way through this standing room only crowd. And there's the final score. Brookline High School Indians 13, the Newton North Tigers seven.